What's happening, everybody? I'm Steve, and welcome to Junk Drummer TV, where I give my analysis, my initial reactions, and hot takes on the drummers of today and yesterday, and maybe tomorrow if I stick around that long. I am a professional drum teacher and a gigging musician, and I have been for the last 20 years. On today's episode, we're going to be watching Carter Beaufort from the Dave Matthews Band perform What Would You Say? Right off the bat, let's just get it out there. The Dave Matthews Band is a very divisive group. You either love them or you hate them. They get a lot of that jam band hate, and that's unfortunate because I think they're a little, there's a little more substance to them than kind of the standard, you know, meandering jam band. But <laughs> there's a lot of people out there who hate the Dave Matthews Band. I'm not one of them. I'm not a gigantic Dave Matthews Band anymore uh, fan anymore. I used to be when I was younger. But here's the thing, all the people who give that Dave Matthews Band hate, they all end their sentence with Dave Matthews Band, blah, 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 blah. But Carter Bofer is one of the best drummers in the world. So even if you don't like the band, people still love Carter Beaufort. He's one of those drummers that as soon as he starts playing, you know exactly who it is playing. Now, with all that out of the way, let's get into it. Man, you could not get away from this song in the mid-90s. What's up with those hamburger helper gloves? Okay, so, you know, right off the bat, one of the more famous characteristics of Carter's playing is he's open-handed. You know, he's a left-handed drummer. He plays this way, he's, uses his right over here. It's a really uh, advantageous way to play, I think. It keeps you open to be able to move all the way around the drum set while keeping on your on your ride sources. I think it's more like a 21st century way to play. I think everybody should play like this. That being said, I play traditional. So like right here, that's the, I call that the Motown beat. The Motown beat, like if you play that that groove, you can play, you know, 75% of Motown songs. Bump, 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 bump. Uh, that's what that groove is. When I talk to my students and if I say, hey, this is the Motown beat, they know I'm talking about that one. <laughs> so yeah, on top of like all this you know, fantastic A plus playing. Carter is the main lyric, uh, uh, background vocal in this band, so he's doing all of that stuff and singing all those harmonies. So right here, this this opens up Carter's style. When you think of Carter, you think of a lot of really complex two-handed. He's not doing it right now, but he was before. A lot of two, a uh, complex two-handed patterns on the snare drum. It's a real dancey hi-hat. He makes the groove dance. Like right here would be a good uh, a good shot to, to demonstrate something that he does really well. That is, he's always wearing those hockey jerseys like that. Um, his posture, Carter Bofer's posture is perfect. He's very you know, upright, uh, you know, you could balance a book on his head. That's the, the best way to go about playing efficiently. One of the, one of the biggest uh, 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 mistakes that students make, especially when they're taller, they tend to want to kind of slump over like that. And when you do that, you're just restricting all of your body movements. You know, he's plays, he plays on a huge set. You know, he's got, you know, splash symbol all the way over here and then, you know, drums from all the way over here and then, you know some chinas and stuff back this way so he's got a he's got a big huge distance to 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 traverse and by using that good posture like that it makes that that much easier slouching's just so bad you see it all the time that being said Levon Helm slouched and it doesn't matter cuz he can do anything he can get by with it <laughs> Real active right hand, lots of ghost notes, you know. He's a funk drummer. Ooh. 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 
man, we got to watch that again. That that over the top linear funk drumming like that, I man, that's really hard. You know, go ahead and play through all of the advanced funk studies by Rick Latham. It won't get you there. That's 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 badass drumming right there. I want to bring that back and check that out. Like that's a style that's real hard to play. You know, when we talk about linear drumming, we talk about uh, where you get a, get away from uh, constant hi hat patterns and and constant like two and four on the snare drum. Yeah, like here. Woo. That's an adult dose right there. got his lyrics right there on the screen there it is that's that's the Carter Beaufort lick if you're a marching band drummer that licks not that big of a deal it's one that's very common in the drumline world they call it a herta or a herta it's that thing he uses it all the time uh, I'm gonna try not to get too wonky by how uh, by explaining this lick but to be able to play that that what herta or herta first what you do is you take that accent pattern that's like every three sixteenth notes that we all do and replace that accent take the accent away but that each one of those notes one e and the two e and a three e and a four and on each one of those sixteenth notes you play two thirty second notes right and then so you're playing a thirty second note on the one e and the two e and a three e and a four e and a he uses it like a weapon. That's one of the most like common Carter Beaufort feels. <laughs> you'll be at the club and you'll see the drummer do it. Like and you listen to Carter too. I hear you. Uh, I think I read in like a modern drum, a modern drummer magazine where uh, Carter said he got that lick from Billy Cobham, and that would make a lot of sense because he does play a lot like Billy Cobham. Sounds like there's like a banjo on stage. I know that's not it. So, getting into our solo, you know, has the wherewithal to keep that groove going and sling that microphone out of his face, out of his face. So, like right here, you know, he's going to be in improv mode. He's going to be, you know, listening to that that saxophone soloist and and reacting and kind of speaking back and forth. You know. It's, coming from like a you know jazz idea you know comping behind that this is where you know people talk about how Dave Matthews is kind of a jam band because they do extend and improv there ain't nothing wrong with that so like if you notice as a drummer the guitar player uh, Dave and kind of the electric guitar player has terrible tone uh, you're bow, bow, bow. Down, down, down. They're kind of being the drummer through there and letting Carter, yeah, and the, the, the soloist, you know, play back and forth and explore, explore the space. <laughs> there he is blowing bubbles. <laughs> That's another signature of Carter Beaufort. I think I heard somebody talk about like, you know, he playing seven and chew gum and four. Yeah, so right now, man, he's just responding back and forth. Playing over the bar line right there. Ah! So yeah, like kind of a written uh, uh, post-op to that uh, solo. <laughs> Get some microphone just in time. Like this part right here. This is a this is a good example of uh, what can happen uh, when a band plays a song a million times. This song is from their uh, their first major label release. Yes, Dave Matthews Band fans. I know there was one before this that they sold out the back of their van, but on uh, Under the Table and Dreaming. So that was like ninety three, four, five, somewhere around in there. They've been playing this song for that long. And, you know, if you go to a DMB show, more than likely you're going to see this. I've seen them 
I've seen them two or three times. I'm pretty sure they play this every time. And uh, when a band uh, plays a song for that long, especially a band that has kind of an exploratory uh, uh, nature to them, like the Dave Matthews Band does, a lot of times, especially live, you will you will write rewrite parts from the record. So if you were to listen to this on the uh, initial, you know, uh, recording, this part of don't don't bop don't don't bop or whatever it is they're playing. That's not on the, the regular recording. That's a thing where this band has explored this song to the maximum and have found other things to play. Bands do that to keep these songs that they've been playing for 20 plus years fresh and fun. Trust me, I'm in a band that we play about 27 songs and half for the last five years, and we are consistently rewriting stuff when we're on the road at Soundcheck just to freshen it up for us. And that's exactly what's going on right here. Yeah, that. Man, he's a good singer too, man. That's really hard to play drums and sing. I know we've already talked about him, and I'll talk about him a lot. Ooh, big six tuplet drum fill right there. Yeah. What I wanted to uh, complete that last thought. When you sing and play at the same time, that's like a fifth limb you're having to deal with. So you're having to deal with you know two hands two feet and keeping that stuff in time and 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 playing the right part and then on top of it sing and most of the time sing a harmony so you're not you know you don't have unless you're like you know don henley or levon helm or phil collins you're not singing the main line so you're doing all of these four-way you know limb things and having to think of singing the harmony on top of it man that's really 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 hard to do you know he makes it look very very easy yeah okay so yeah man carter beauford uh i love him uh you know i don't really listen to the dmb much anymore there was a time in my life when i was a gigantic dave matthews band fan like here's a here's a youtube confession when i was like a teenager this is when they first came out and i was a punk rock kid you know what i'm saying like my first band in high school was like a punk rock band uh, and then Dave Matthews band came out and just destroyed all that because I was like, whoa, the, 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 the beauty of, of creativity in this drumming. I got to get some of that. But yeah, the YouTube confession is I was such a big Dave Matthews band fan when I was like 15 or 16. Like I wanted to get the fire dancer tattoo that had like the, the line uh, around it, you know. Uh, could I have been anyone other than me? When I was 16, I thought that was profound. Luckily, I didn't get that tattoo. But yeah, man, uh, the Dave Matthews Band, the, uh, they're unnecessarily uh, derided by their critics. They're fun. Like, man, watch Carter play. That dude's face is nothing but joy. He is so happy he gets to be in that place at that moment playing for all these people. Man, it's infectious. Uh, music fans, quit being so jaded. Dave Matthews Band, they're cool with me. I got a buddy down in Nashville who's going to love that. So, there you have it, man. Uh, my, my newest episode of Junk Drummer TV. Uh, thank you for watching. If you uh, found that informative, or as Sam Harris says, found that valuable, please give me a double tap on the subscribe and the notification bell. Uh, Feel free to uh, share, comment, and like. Those are the three things you can do on YouTube. Uh, please hit up my comments with any questions. If I got too wonky on that one uh, uh, lick that he played earlier, hit me up and I'll try to explain it better because I'm a drum teacher and that's what I do. Uh, also in the comment section, please leave me any suggestions of uh, videos you would like for me to react to because I'm going to check them all out. So anyway, man. Carter Beauford, Dave Matthews Band, what would you say? Listen to it, love it, and keep practicing until it's easy.